The first Strix Point Mini is here, and AMD's latest generation mobile chip sure does impress. It makes Intel's Meteor Lake look about as good as a Minecraft movie. I am Steve. Thanks, Steve. B-Link Sir9 wins the world's first Strix Point Mini PC moniker, and it impresses with great performance at low noise levels. But as nice as it is, there are some things to keep in mind, such as... No? Add first? The EaseUS disk copy software makes upgrading your storage drives faster and easier. Clone drives or migrate Windows installations to new ones with a simple and easy to use interface. This app supports disk, system, and even partition cloning. Find out more with the link in the video description. The Sur9 looks very similar to its predecessor with a sleek Mac Mini inspired metal case. The only change you might have picked up on is the holes on the front for the quad array microphone. The other new stuff is found inside, which we'll check out shortly. The first Strix Point CPU to show its pretty face is AMD's horribly named Ryzen 9 AI HX370. Really, that's the best you could come up with. Intel and AMD seem to be competing in terms of who can come up with the worst naming scheme. I am Steve. Thanks, Steve. Anyway, we finally have an AMD mobile chip in a mini this size with 12 cores, 24 threads, which in itself is a cause for celebration. But on top of that, we have the new RDNA 3.5 integrated graphics architecture, now named Radeon 890M, which we'll compare against the last two generation flagships. Accessory-wise, a power supply and HDMI are included. No visor mounting on this one. So, nothing's changed there over the Sur 8. And speaking of nothing changing, let's look at the ports. I mentioned the microphone array already, which lets you AI while AIing with the AI. How exciting. Both USB ports are 10 gigabit, but the USB-C is data only. A 3.5 mm audio jack and clear CMOS is also included. On the rear, another three USB type A. Two are USB 2 and one is 10 gigabit. There's also a USB 4 port for some eGPU action, Oh, and this USB 4 supports power delivery and display. My USB-C monitor powered it, no problem. B-Link says the HDMI and DisplayPort support up to 4K 120Hz, and along with a USB-C, you can run a maximum of three displays natively. There's another audio jack if you prefer plugging things in the rear. And also a Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN jack. Disappointingly, no Wi-Fi 7 is included. It's just an Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200 chip. The Sur9 comes in at $999 US dollars for the one terabyte SSD, 32 gigabyte RAM model. Wait a second, Rob News Alert. B-Link wanted me to mention they're giving away five of these minis on Reddit. So everyone's got a chance to own one, even if said chance may end up becoming mathematically insignificant. I'll link the competition in the video description, which ends October 23rd. Alternatively, I guess you could spend five years on YouTube learning the ropes as a content creator, building an audience, get sampled, and then spend 25 hours reviewing it. Both good options, just one's a little easier than the other. Thanks, Steve. Who's Steve? I am Steve. I think I've complained enough about the rubber inserts covering the screws on the new B-Link minis already, so... Have fun plucking them out. Then it's four screws and pull on the rubber to pop that lid out with confidence. The stereo speaker is a new addition to the Sur9. Two more screws for the dust filter and watch out for the speaker ribbon cable. Then another two screws and lift the heatsink to get access to both M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slots and the M.2 Wi-Fi card. B-Link Sur9 uses soldered LPDDR5X memory, which in this particular case is the correct choice. Normally I advocate as many user replaceable parts as possible, but DDR5 sodium is just too slow. With a soldered memory, we get 7500 mega transfers compared to 5600 with sodium, which helps the integrated graphics perform much better. But yes, it's not upgradable or replaceable. Windows 11 Pro is included and there's no malware on the B-Link as usual. The latest Ubuntu version works fine with this mini. Gotta hand it to them for keeping up to date with the latest CPU releases. Alright, let's hit the benchmarks. Oh, look at that ladies and gentlemen. 
we have a new wiener. How exciting. AMD finally takes a single core crown in Cinebench, smashing past the 2000 barrier. Against the previous gen best result, that's a 12.5% increase. Where the new HX370 really dominates is in multi-core. A 28% jump over the previous best AMD result. And if we switch the default balance mode in the BIOS to performance, the margin increases to 36%. Between the two modes, performance shows just over a 6% improvement. Intel may be in second place, but the HX370 uses a lot less power, as you'll see later. The Geekbench Mini PC results already had AMD at the top, but the HX370 comfortably takes the crown. Though the multi-core margin is not as impressive. Geekbench spits out only a 9.5% improvement with the extra 4 cores. Another win for the Sur 9 in the H.264 video encoding test. Performance mode really shaves down the time to complete. Unsurprisingly, the new CPU also wins in AV1 software video encoding. One area Intel still has the advantage is AV1 hardware encoding with the iGPU. Also, AMD CPUs don't support AV1 10-bit hardware encoding with VCE. Another really cool thing to see with AMD's Strix point is the generational jump in integrated graphics performance. 3D Mark shows 15.5% over the next best AMD score in DX11 and 23.5% in DX12. Intel's numbers on the other hand can be ignored. They don't represent the reality. The latest DX12 benchmark has the HX370 at just over 22% faster. An impressive CPU all round, taking the top spot in almost everything, as you'd hope for the price tag. With those benchmarks out of the way, I present to you three generations of AMD integrated graphics side by side. All redone from scratch with the latest drivers and updates along with average FPS and 1% lows. We start with the esports games. Counter-Strike 2 sees the smallest gains over the previous gen. But the difference in League of Legends is huge. The new CPU pushing frames far above the previous two generations. Another good increase in Valorant, though all minis are being CPU bottlenecked and the Sur9 the hardest. Planted. Another nice jump in frame rate in Dota 2 for the new generation. Now we move on to the GPU heavy titles using native rendering and no frame generation for raw performance data. Over a 20% gain for the HX370 over the last gen in Forza Horizon 5. And that 1% low is much nicer. There's an even larger performance increase in Ghost of Tsushima. And around a 20% improvement in Cyberpunk. Robocop is now actually playable without FSR at 1080p low. Huge gain in Hellblade 2 for the latest generation. You should not have come here, child. This dark land pushes back. Same in God of War 2.
Now we can play Space Marine 2 without FSR and maintain a decent frame rate. Wii U emulation gets a boost, still CPU bottleneck, but getting closer to 60 FPS. And PS3 sees larger gains. Overall, a much bigger generational jump this time around. Really impressive performance, no doubt aided by the faster memory. B-Link said the HX370 doesn't provide enough PCIe lanes for a PCIe slot like the GTI 14 Ultra Mini, so there's no dock support. The only option if you want to boost graphics performance is using a USB 4 eGPU. Here's my Razer Core X with an RTX 3070. Latency Mon tests the Mini for any issues with audio latency and if you're going to see any dropouts for audio production. As you can see, it passes no problem. The last couple of AMD CPU generations have been pretty good for video editing. So it's no surprise that HX370 handles my 4K video project just fine. Export times will also be faster than other minis thanks to the improved CPU performance. The inbuilt speakers are nothing amazing. They just do the job of providing audio and sound similar to what you find in a laptop. So that means no bass and not great for music or movies if you like your audio to be high quality. And speaking of quality, the microphone is okay. For its purpose of AIing or audio calls, it does the job. I I'm Steve. Thanks, Steve. I had awful wireless reception on the Beelink Sur 8, but it looks to be fixed with this one. Bluetooth range when tested with an audio speaker is excellent, and there were no connection problem notifications in my Valorant game session. I was using Wi Fi with a 5G band at 12 meters or 39 feet, and download speeds were quick. You can get into the BIOS by matching the delete key on startup. Advanced OEM features has most things people look for, including the power limit setting. If you want to increase the amount of VRAM from the default 4GB, you can do that in Advanced, AMD CBS, NBIO Common Options, GFX Configuration. Go back a couple of steps if you want the AC power loss option. You can also overclock the LPDDR5 memory, although if it runs stable will depend on the mini. Go back a step into UMC common options, LPDDR options, timing configuration, and there's a warning here to not mess around unless you know what you're doing. Yes, I'm talking to you, Steve. 8000 mega transfers is the maximum. This gave me a 3% boost in 3D Mark for DX11 and 4% in DX12. Nice. There are some additional tweaking options in AMD overclocking, but it's limited. Three D Mark storage benchmark is a long test, moving files around and checks the speed of the drive under stress. So far, the best result is from the crucial Gen Four drive in this mini. The Sur Nine has excellent idle power draw at just eight watts. And AMD continues to keep the maximum power draw around the same level, even with the extra cores and better GPU performance. Look at that Intel Core Ultra 9 in comparison. CPU temp has gone up a bit over the Sur 8, but it's still one of the better max CPU temp results and holds up okay using either performance mode. The Sur 8 was amazing on fan noise, making B-Link a market leader in the low noise category and the Sur 9 continues the trend. It's low enough at both idle and load that even I'm happy.
B-Link has typically also kept the SSD drives cooled in some way. And the drive temp here is nice and low thanks to the large heatsink. So, it's conclusion time. B-Link Sur 9 is the fastest Mini of this size right now with class leading CPU and integrated graphics performance. It follows the previous generation by having good thermals, industry leading low fan noise, and at least on this unit, fix the Wi-Fi range issues from the B-Link Sur 8. However, the price of entry is high. If you bought the Sur 8, which only came out a few months ago, you're not gonna feel any regret. This clear segmentation based on price to performance. Only Wi-Fi 6 is included. I would have liked to see Wi-Fi 7, as was found in the GTI 14 Ultra. The Australian power supply is too big, and the same one was bundled with a Sur 8. There are more compact 120 watt units out there, and apparently the North American version of the Sur 8 did come with a smaller power supply. Maybe that's the case here too. So that's the B-Link Sur 9 showing complete AMD dominance with its Strix Point processor, and a price tag to match. This Mini runs cool, quiet, has fast snappy performance, and is almost everything I've ever wanted in a mini PC with integrated graphics. On that front, it's very impressive, but you'll need to pay a sizable chunk of change for the privilege. Even minis with discrete mobile GPUs start showing up around this price point, which will give you better gaming performance if that's your goal. But they have their downsides too. Anyway, the B-Link Sur 9 is affiliate linked in the video description. Any purchase through my links keeps the channel afloat. Oh, and Intel's new generation Lunar Lake CPUs are on the way and will hopefully provide some competition to Strix Point. It's an exciting time in the mini PC space at the moment. Things are moving really quickly and improvements are coming in leaps and bounds. If you're wondering about my B-Link eGPU doc video, it's coming very soon. But in the meantime, why not check out the GTI 14 Ultra review, which is the only mini so far that supports it. You can find that right here. Cheers. Thanks, Steve. I am Steve.